This video will walk you through a workflow in which raster lang cover data are converted to vector for further attribution and analysis. The raster lang cover data set contains four categories and was produced by performing an unsupervised classification on Landsat 8 multispectral imagery. Raster is a fine format for storing lang cover data, but in this particular case I want to know the area and attribute the extent of this particular lake. To reduce the amount of data I have to convert to vector, I'm first going to clip the raster down to my current view extent. Using the raster clip function, I can select my input raster, leave the clipping geometry set to the active view extent, and then run the process to clip the land cover data set down to the current zoom level. Zooming back out, we can see that the result of the raster clip function is a new layer that is clipped down to my previous zoom extent. Because this is a raster function, I didn't actually write out a new raster file, but created a virtual layer based on the clipping extent. I can now use this clip version of the land cover data set to convert to polygon format. From the analysis menu, I'm going to choose tools to launch the geoprocessing window, navigate to toolboxes, and under conversion tools, go to the from raster tool set. Obviously, I'm going to use the raster to polygon tool, which will allow me to convert raster data to polygon format. The input raster is the clipped land cover. The field is the numerical value associated with each pixel, and the output polygon features are going to be written to my project geo database. I'm leaving simplify polygons checked, which will result in smoother vector features, and then clicking run will execute the geoprocessing task. The resulting output is a vector polygon representation of the clipped land cover dataset. The original land cover raster dataset had four possible values. These were stored in the value column in the attribute table. This was the field used for attribution when we did the raster to polygon conversion. When we open up the attribute field for the vectorized version of the land cover data set, we see a field called grid code. Grid code stores the land cover code and corresponds to the value field in the original raster land cover attribute table. To symbolize the vector version of the land cover data, we'll navigate to the appearance tab and open up the symbology. We're going to choose to symbolize the vector data based on unique values, and the field we want to do that is grid code. Recall this is the unique land cover code corresponding to the value field in the original land cover raster. If we want to take the time, we can go in and adjust the labels so that they display the actual class names as opposed to just a numerical value. In this example, I'm only interested in the vector polygon representation of a single lake so that I can know the area of the lake and also attribute it with additional information. To select this individual polygon, I'm going to choose the selection tool from the main menu, select the lake, and then convert the selection into a standalone layer. I haven't created a new feature class. The layer I've generated is simply a virtual subset that points back to the original feature class. Opening the attribute table for this new layer, we see that it contains all the same attributes as the original feature class. The only difference is that it has a single record representing the individual lake that I selected and created the layer from. I'd like to make some modifications to the attribute table, and thus it makes sense for me to export this layer to a brand new vector feature class. To do this, I'll right-click on the layer in the table of contents, choose Data, and Export Features. This will write the polygon feature out to a brand new feature class within my Geo database. To avoid me making modifications to the wrong layer, I'm going to remove the original vector layers from my table of contents. I'm now going to make some modifications to the attribute table of my lake polygon feature class. I'm going to start by removing those attribute fields which are no longer relevant to the dataset. Now I'll add a new field where I can store the name of the lake then I'm going to populate that attribute with the lake name. When I'm finished with my edits, I'll be sure to go to the Edit menu and save my edits to finalize my vector feature class. Because my vector data is stored within a geo database, the area for the polygon, in this case the lake area, is stored within the shape area field. The units correspond to the coordinate system units for the polygon feature class squared, in this case meters squared. This video reviewed the steps necessary to take the output from an unsupervised classification and convert it to vector format for additional attribution analysis.